Shoot, is it recording? Oh yeah, we're recording. Yo! Okay, so we're live this time from Hat with um, episode... I wouldn't even know what this episode will be called, dude. You don't know what the episode Okay, so called. so if you don't know, when I like recorded the first episode, it's actually just me and J-Max okay. on a Facebook call. Okay. So the audio poll would be synced off really bad. I see. <laughs> and, uh, then, and then this episode is really going to be in, for sure. Like, this actually is an episode. Me filming this right now, actually, okay. is great, because I plan to film this. So it's... If I can film five episodes in the week, oh. I'll be happy. Well, I mean, you have five SoCal locals to go to. Yeah, so yeah. It's like so you got work cut out for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, the fact, I don't know, this will probably be episode three. Yeah, this is three. Ep- episode three, Loose and Colorful. Loose and Colorful. Yeah, it's, it's a great name. <laughs> to my right, which will you, which looks like is my left, it's the one and only man behind the lens, Javi. Hi. Uh, this is off the record if you guys don't know. This is a um, talk show, and I want to personally thank 2GG for allowing me to use the equipment here from Hat. Javi, of course. I want to thank Javi for being on the show today. Thank you so much for coming. Hi. Um, <laughs> this is a talk show where we just talk about stuff and just bring things that are off the record to the record. Okay. I know the name is super redundant, dude. I swear, I will change it. Do you think I should change the name? What? Like, is the show called Off the Record? Yeah. Oh. I don't, I don't see what the big deal is. Yeah. I don't know okay. what the big deal is. Because the original, sh- the original name of the first talk show I did, which I'm still doing, by the way. Um, as of this video, I'm, I'm actually in the work of... Uh, actually, if you're watching this video, Uh-oh. that should have been already done. Okay. Yeah. All right, well... I'm pretty sure. It should, it, it, I'm 100% sure. It's, yeah, if you're watching this video, I would have already filmed and done the first episode of <laughs> Talking Smash. Which was originally called the SoCal Smash Talk Show, but dang, yeah, that's I changed a, the name. That's, that's a lot of rebranding. Yeah, that that's. I had to change the name, dude. Like that's that's a lot of rebranding. Yeah. That's hard. That that's hard. coming from me too. <laughs> that's coming from me. It went through like three different iterations of my own name. But that, and three but, different ads. And but stuff. that's but like see, that's, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. about those, those iterations of your name. People don't know that. People don't even know you went through iterations of your name. You just know you as that guy behind the lens. They oh, don't know you. Yeah. Of. Uh, I mean, if, if we want to talk about that, yeah, I originally started with the with the really lazy tag of camera guy, mm-hmm. and that lasted for two hours before uh, my crew went, why not you just go with that Nintendo character like he do? Okay. And I was like, that actually works out really well, because I'm a Mario Kart fiend. Yeah. And it was like, there was one picture in Mario Kart that if, if you look up the Kido MK8, mm-hmm. I think it was Mario Kart 8. Yeah, it's Mario Kart 8. Um, yeah, the, the time for, for the Wii U. Yeah, for the Wii U's Mario Kart 8, and it's just like there's a picture of Lakitu. He's holding he's holding a camera, like a huge camera, like this, and he's just like looking into it. Oh like, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, that's the one. That's yeah, it. That's and he perfect. has his own little logo, and I was like, I'm just gonna do it off that logo. And then over time, you know, I, I feel like having like a character based tag should be exclusive to people who like only play the game. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm. I'm a little bit busy. I can't. I can't go to everything. You know, I can't yeah, do yeah, everything. Yeah. You know, it's like, hard, dude. Uh, it's like trying to be a player and trying to be like a camera person and mm-hmm. trying to work like with 2GG and behind the scenes over there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to do. And I was like, you know what? I got to put down one of these things. And I love working. I love working with 2GG too much, and I love being behind the camera too much to yeah. to give up one or the other. So I had to like do a whole rebranding. I had to like fix my Twitters, fix my Instagrams, fix, yeah. fix like. The potential Facebook pages that I ended up just terminating because I just got tired of the Facebook medium, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole story. In it, it's it's, it's a dying medium, by the way. Like, I it, feel like it is. It's like, well, for those who don't know, I'm also the admin for the SoCal Facebook. The SoCal yeah, yeah, yeah. Facebook I page believe the only two, the only three that I know of yeah. in person that I've ever met is you, OKO, and Alp. Those are the only, oh, I think Oki, is, isn't he... No, okay. So it's only you, OKO, and Al. Those are the only three that I've ever met. Yeah. Everyone else I've never heard of. What's oh, that? I, Zan's in it. Too. Zan's in it? Okay. Zan, Zan was in it for a little while. Or? I know. I know. Well, when I last heard, he was no longer in it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I didn't. That's why I didn't include him. Yeah. No. no he uh, he left, and then there was um, Peking for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, San Diego Little Mac. He was in there for a little while. Um, I guess it just wasn't for him, so he left a little bit later. Yeah. Um reasons i i really don't know he just said you know i this isn't really for me you know i'll see you guys later and we're just like okay bye left the group chat you know that's the end of it and it was like okay cool you know whatever yeah like that's just the way things are but it's like i feel like it would never be people asked like we should have people 
like commentators and people who, like should be in it and I was like I personally don't have the time like I I don't have the time to help if people ask me my input like I wouldn't mind like yeah sure I'll, I'll give you a minute of my time and like but to actually like sit down and like go through numerous you know articles and things like that just to go as is I know you making the Google Doc takes a lot of time too as well making the Google Doc requires me to sit down for it it's not only that it's like I ask people on Facebook hey if you want me to put your events on the SoCal doc on, on that document on the calendar I need you to invite me via Facebook yeah to invite me to the event via Facebook because that's the first thing I check when I look at the when mm -hmm. I look at um events that are coming up yeah you know any invites that i get you know anything like that kwan's on your computer i don't um, know what he's typing kwan's up to no good i don't know he yeah Quan, you guys probably saw Quan. wait there it is just, just did the thing all right anyways so yeah you're part of that yeah what's up Quan? Dude, what's up what's Bashi's up? Bullshit. Bashi? oh he's been playing i want to be the Bashi on uh his, his twitch what's what's your twitch Quan? 2 gg Quan. Yeah, There's a plugin for you guys. Anyways, but yeah, ma managing that whole dog is, is pretty big. See, yeah, that, see, it, that's it, it, it's a lot of things that I need people to do, mm -hmm. and they won't do it. Like, I need you to invite me via Facebook mm -hmm. because that's the first thing that I'm going to check. I'm yeah. not going to go through every individual subregion page just to find one event that I missed. That's yeah. too much. It's too much scrolling. Oh my it, god! It's like, and, and we're, we're SoCal. We're huge. Yeah, and here in SoCal, like we have an event every day. We have an event every day, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we also have, not only that, we have two to three events every single day. Yeah. But in different subregions, but nobody says anything to me. Yeah. So they get upset when their their region gets left out of this Google Doc, and I'm like, well, I mean, what do you want me to do? Yeah. What do you, exactly? It's, it's like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to stay connected to the internet like the entire time? Do you want me to like not have a job and dedicate all my life to it? I was like, dude, that's why it became exhausting for me on Facebook. Yeah. Like that's exhausting. Like. It's bugging me. What's bugging you? There it is. Oh, I want to make sure everyone can hear you. That's bugging you. Yeah. Sorry. Um, no, but that that in itself became exhausting to mm -hmm. to a certain degree because obviously I could just not be on Facebook. Right. Right. Obviously, right. Yeah. but it's like I made a personal obligation to try and take care of the community. You know? And and I felt that that was that was really good because when I first started, like everyone else, when like this game when Smash Four was brand new and literally like hot off the presses and everybody literally was like fiending, <sighs> fiending it dude people, fiending. Fe people were fiending dude this was yeah. when like the community was just ripe with so much like everything dude like i had this is yeah. this is the 3ds too i remember people were just looking oh, at combos I, I, I was not around twitter was going dude. ham dude there were so much things going on on twitter i remember like if you go to J japanese twitter Combo videos. Did you see any combo videos of like wow. tech that I never saw? Still, still probably have not seen to this day. Um, I had to go through a page, through another page on Smashboards. Oh. I had to go on Smashboards, go through a page, go through tournaments, oh, yeah. scroll all the way down, go to that, make sure that was actually like I actually had to call the. Because I wasn't sure if they were doing it or not. No. Uh, and I didn't want to go down there, waste my time, and be like, oh my god. So I had no way of knowing. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know the Soul Cup community was a thing on Facebook as a page established. Yeah, no, I didn't know either. I literally had to go, I had to call the place of the, the, place of the venue to oh, confirm. Yeah. So this was a church, by the way. This The first the first tournament I ever went to was Mayhem. And they had Smash 3DS as a side event. This was literally like the weekend of the, the, the day uh, the game launched. Oh, my god. Yeah. That was actually my first time ever doing Come to Um It's not about me. Literally, I had to call the church, ask them to confirm <laughs> that they are having this event. Yeah. And they go, yes, we are having it. So I said, okay, if I don't get 3DS, I at least get to go for, like, Melee. At yeah. the time, I was playing Melee. Oh, I see. Um, I actually went and ended up going 2-2, two, two, but I, I got bothered by West Balls. So the, <laughs> um, but I, that's the way I had to do it, dude. So when the, when, the, when the Facebook page came up, and I remember you were the first person to ever, like, do that Google Doc, specifically. <sighs> to my knowledge. To my knowledge, you were the first person. There was, um... If, if there's someone else, please stand up. But, to my knowledge, you were the first person. That was, um... The Google Doc itself went through maybe five or six iterations. Um, the first, the very first one was, I think, like, the second day after Wii U came out. Mm -hmm. And everybody was just hosting tournaments left and right. Or everybody just wanted to play the game. Yeah. So, I got Notepad on Windows. <laughs> I got Notepad on Windows. Damn. I went through everything. I saw the information. I got the name of it, the address, and mm -hmm. what days. And then it was all out of order. 
Some of it was even misspelled. And I took a screenshot of that, mm -hmm. and I just posted it on the page as a photo. That's pretty good. No links, no nothing. People yeah. just had to look at a photo and just type the address while scrolling back and looking for the photos. Because obviously, like, some smartphones have it. Other smartphones don't. But, like, at the time, there weren't no, like, picture-in-picture -picture in smartphones. Oh, like, yeah, they just split the screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, halfway. It's like, some people can do that, but I never even discovered that function until JMX showed me, like, three months ago. <laughs> like, I didn't know that was a <laughs> thing. So, who, God knows how long it's been. Yeah. You know? But... The, that's that's what it went through. It went through Notepad, and then someone was like, "Why not do a Google Doc?" I'm just like, I, I was so like naive to the internet. Mm -hmm. I was like, I thought you needed to pay for like Google Drive and stuff. Oh, like that. Dude, so did I. I thought I thought that for a while, so I was like, "Dude, I'm not gonna pay for Google Drive." And yeah, like, you don't have to pay for Google Drive. And I just kind of like brushed it off because I was already done with the subject. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I, that's just how I was when I was younger. I was just like, "Here's a reason not to do something. Here's a counterpoint." Yeah, I've already lost interest. You giving me your counterpoint? I'm I'm just like. I'm done. Like that's just the kind of person I was. <laughs> it wasn't, it's, a, and it's it's hard though because, like, finding that time to do it all, it was exhausting. It is it, exhausting. It, it, it was it was silly because like I was like constantly like refreshing the page, mm -hmm. but not only that, I was taking that same notepad paper, and I was like wiping a, wiping something. I had to scroll everything up, and then I have to like retype everything again, oh like gosh. typing all the information, no links, no nothing. It wasn't funny enough. It wasn't until JMX actually hit me up in the comments section he's like hey i know you could really use a google thing so i made you a calendar template and this was way before i was even 2gg this mm -hmm. is way this is way even before i even committed to photography yeah like this is when i had like a flip camera i had a flip camera actually out. i remember you had an eye touch yeah i i had it i had it i had a flip i had a flip thing mm -hmm. at first the flip was it was it the flip it was the flip you know you know hold on, real, real quick real quick plug in i used to work at this place called the melt Okay. Oh, shoot. The okay, and, yeah. Anyways, oh. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I should say that, but I used to work at this place called The Melt. Okay. Turns out that company was owned by the guy who created the flip camera. Yeah. I oh, thought it was pretty What? Cool. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. Long, it's long. yeah. I, I had a flip camera. I upgraded to a Kodak Easy Share, mm -hmm. and it was waterproof. <laughs> that's pretty And awesome. I was like, that's actually kind of cool. It was waterproof up to like 30 feet until the pressure just yeah. kind of crushes but it. Like I, but at that point, like at a local, like when will you ever drop your phone? 30 feet water. I, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was still something that I wanted to do. Cause yeah, like, yeah. Originally, I wanted to do a lot of underwater stuff. I wanted to, like, stuff with surfing and waves and things like that. Yeah. Like, I always wanted to do that. And I always just wanted to get that one shot. So I bought this camera, and I went to the beach. It was just super murky, and I just didn't know what to do with it. Uh -huh. So I was like, I, I might as well just use this when I go to tournaments. So I went, yeah. to, I went to, like, two tournaments with that Easy Share, and I found that editing was, like, super difficult. So I went to an iTouch, and iTouch had iMovie. Oh, yeah. And you could just scroll through, and you could just, like, cut whatever you want. You could just mm -hmm. drag and drop video, and you can cut it. Like, with an iTouch, it was, like, super, like, easy. Because it's like, I touched the cut tool. Now I touch the part that I want to cut. Now I take this part, I drag it up to the trash can, and that's it. I cut that scene. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And I did that for... I did that for... A Final Destination Cards and Games tournament. That was my very first one I ever went to. Oh, really? That was my very first the ever tournament. Like, well, for Smash 4. Smash 4? Okay. For, for Brawl, it was E4U. I remember they used to do... Zen was, like, the TO or something for... I I don't want people to, like, message me, like, Oh, Zan was on the TO. Or, like... Because that's how everybody gets. Uh, like, if you guys are literally watching, that's how everybody gets. Like, if, yeah. you, if you make one mistake, everybody will, like, the next time you see you, they're like, Oh, my God, Zan's on the TO. No, yeah. From, to my knowledge, Zan was the TO, or he was at least the one making the event. And I went to one event when Project M was like in its high, when it's like high point. Oh, I see. And that was uh, Forest Forest Temple or something like that. It was like in Panorama City when we used I to have know, UGC. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, that that was speaking of that. That was actually my second ever tournament was Final Battle. I I did what, commentary what, at that. What, that was my first. Was Final Battle was my second ever tournament. The second ever tournament that I covered with my eye touch, mm -hmm. and I even took some pictures there. Some of them got put up on Facebook being like, Final Battle was crazy. Take a look at this. Oh, dude, that and it was, was like, it was a big crowd of people. And people were just like, dude, this is Final Battle. And I was, it, if that, the context was better, mm -hmm. I would have been happy that that picture existed. Right. If the context was I, better. Were, were you the one who took it from a, from a... I went up top. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I remember that. Because yeah. I remember I could see myself in that video. And I remember I showed it that day. I was still living with my mom at that time. Mm -hmm. And I showed my mom, like, damn, that's, there's so many people here. Yeah, no, that that, that was that. I, I, I wish I could like, go find back in there and find it, that it, video. It, it was on Facebook for a while. And I was just like, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Too bad the context is so negative. And then <laughs> I, I remember after that, I went to... I ended up going to Center of the Universe. 
which, oh, is, which, yeah. is a, which was a very popular Co- house by weekly out in Anaheim. Yeah, uh, um, Kotu. I remember it was Kotu. We used, to, we used to call it. Everybody talked about it. Yeah. No, that that was like that was a big deal. That that was actually really. It was big like the deal biggest tournament. Like yeah, I remember. Yeah, that was a big deal at the time. So I went there, and I. I think I met you that day. I, th- I remember we met each other that day. That day I met you, because I remember I remember that day I met you, and I remember you had the eye touch, and I was like, hey, you're the guy who takes all these photos. Who's putting them on Facebook? Because I remember uh, at that yeah. time, you got, Cause you got famous to, for it. Because I went to every week. You went to everything. I went to, I went to everything because there was a good maybe five or six month period where I didn't have a job. Yeah. I didn't have a job. I was going to school on off days. Mm-hmm. And I was going to tournaments on... Well, I was going to school on off days? I was going to school like on certain days. And then mm-hmm. on those off days, I was going to tournaments. And I would just take pictures with my eye touch. With like a crappy like five <laughs> megapixel... <laughs> Like I touch <laughs> camera. This is before like I remember, dude. Like that. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> I I would. My internet was really. Huh? What am I doing the day before Disneyland? You guys going to Disneyland? I don't know. I don't you guys know. going to Disneyland? I I don't I don't know if I'm getting that day off. Oh, shit, you don't know. They haven't. They do. They always screw it up. You know that. Is it? They always screw it up. You know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every t- like every time you ask for a day off, you don't get it. So yeah. you're not even confused. I'm confirmed for the trip. Oh, okay, just not. But not, not for the day before. All right, well, I guess that doesn't really matter. Do you need to stay at my place? Hell no. That shit's far as fuck. I don't know, bro. <laughs> it's calm, by the way, guys. <laughs> I, do right. I, I don't know if anybody's going to, like, I don't know if you're going with somebody from my area and they're going to go down there. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> there that, you go. That is, that's, that's, uh, that, that's that. Yeah, same. Okay. Um. I I went to center about, of the, I yeah. went to center of the universe. I took a bunch of pictures on like a really crappy five megapixel i iPod Touch, mm-hmm. like third, like fourth generation. Like I think this was the last generation they, too. They, they, the, the last one's fifth. Oh, fifth. Okay. But I took it on a fourth generation because mm-hmm. that was the first one that had a camera. That was the first iPod mm-hmm. Touch that had a camera, and I was like, dude, that's awesome. And I bought it for like fifty bucks. It wasn't even that big of a deal. Yeah. But I remember I went to center of the universe. I took a bunch of videos and I took pictures, and then. Um, some people shared it around. I remember I, I interviewed somebody and I made a video about it. And that was the very first time I ever like extracted audio from a clip mm-hmm. and actually took that audio and dubbed it over other clips to make it like look like an actual B-roll documentary style thing. Oh, that's pretty cool. And that was like the very first thing. That was like that was something I always wanted to do, but I never like had the equipment to do. And like the iPod Touch and iMovie was were able to actually do that for me. Right. And I remember the, the first comment I got was from Zan. And Zan was like, this is the content that I want to see from SoCal. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. And then... That's what I'm trying to do, though. Almost, <laughs> almost like, magically, mm-hmm. AT&T decided to be like, here's your upload speed right now. You uploaded a video here. Mm-hmm. Here's where your upload speed is now. 0.02 upload. Damn. 0.02. That's horrible. It went from a 2.8. It went from a 2.0 upload yeah. to 0.02. Like, I took speed tests, and I ran it again and again and again. And that was such a ridiculous upload speed. 0.02. What even is that? Like, yeah. why does that exist? And that, that's where I stayed for a good, a good maybe four months. Right. So even uploading pictures to Facebook, I had to hit upload. I, I wrote down the post. Mm-hmm. I went to bed. I upload. I... I no, what did I do? I made the post. I put the pictures up that I wanted to put up. And then I hit post on Facebook. And then I set my phone down because I knew it wasn't going to get done for another two and a half hours. Right. Can you imagine? Four. 2.3 megabyte photos. Oh, my God. They're, they're, they're going to be That's gone. Eight, yeah. eight megabytes of, of content. That's nothing in today's society. Nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing here. If like, yeah, if you take a, if you take forever to upload a megabyte, like your internet's whack. Yeah, and I'm sitting there like, dude, I can't make content, I can't do anything. Yeah. So I just went in the drought. I was just like, I, I can't do much. I was like going to McDonald's, I was going to Starbucks, you know, I was yeah. going back and forth and all these other places, and I didn't have a job. Yeah. So I was like, dude, I need to like, I need to get a job so I can help, like, I can help people out with the internet or at least, <laughs> at least contribute something mm-hmm. to be able to up to be able to update the internet. You know, maybe get a new connect, maybe get a new connection, maybe even get a new provider. Yeah. So I went and like I got a job and I think my very first job like in this drought was for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And oh yeah, Los you Angeles told me you Angels. told me about this. Yeah, yeah. the Los Angeles Angels. They had you driving like oh, you explained uh, the story. Anaheim, yeah. I 
that was my very first photography job mm. where I got to work with legitimate DSLRs. And it was like, I never used a DSLR right. ever. I know I... I I how did you wait? How did you let's, let's take it back for a second? Let's take it back to the beginning. How did you get this job? Craigslist. Craigslist. Yeah, I I thought like I thought you got the plug in or something, but no, no Craigslist. I literally just went on Craigslist. I looked I looked at every single like section. I was because when you go to Craigslist, it's like all Los Angeles area, mm. and then you can minimize that to like Central, Long Beach, um, I forgot what other areas, San Gabriel Valley. And you can just go through sections. So I went central because it says central LA 323 213 something something something. It had like a bunch of other area codes. And I was like, I'm in 323. Let's try that. Uh, first, first one was my man. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, come, I come for the 323. Yeah. I'm no longer 323. <laughs> yeah. That's where I grew up. I was in the 323 and it was just like the first thing I saw was photo booth attendant. Los Angeles Dodgers. And I was like, photo booth attendant for the Los so, Angeles yeah. Dodgers? Sounds like too good to be true. Also. I was like, that sounds a little weird. So I clicked on it and it's like, hi, my name is blank Soto. Mm -hmm. I run the photo booth business over here at, over here at Dodger Stadium. Mm -hmm. We also are opening up a section with the Angels. We are looking for people to do the following responsibilities. You know, basically attend the photo booth, help out people with whatever problems they're having with the photo booth. You know, right. if they're having technical difficulties, you just kind of go in there and just bang, 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 and just <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just do whatever you need to do. Just, right. just oonga boonga it up. And then, um, you know, you, you unplug it, replug it back in. You know, you just fix the thing. You yeah. know, that's it. And I was like, I'd never done that before. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, oh, greet customers and do this and that and the other. I'm just like, well, I worked at GameStop before, so greeting customers isn't that big of a deal for me. Hi, welcome to GameStop. Yeah. Today we're having a 25%. Super easy. Today we're doing a... 50% off if you trade in this thing. Yeah, 50% off if you trade in this towards Grand Theft Auto V, which is actually a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, oh, well, we, we, we can go into whole tangents about GameStop. That's, just, that's just a video no, for another no, day. I, I have working stories from there. Um, I've, I've heard yeah. very, very... Um, you know what's funny? You... You, Sid, and somebody else, I can't remember who, of, uh, from 2GG has also worn the GameStop. Yeah. Coincidentally. Yeah, it's just... Okay. Three of 2G's members wear the GameStop. It's, it's 2G GameStop, man. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, but it, it just... Um, from that job, I, I just decided, screw it. I'm, I'm just going to apply. Yeah. I'm just going to go for it. You know, I, all I got to do is just learn how to fix the machine, and then I just got to greet customers. And I get to go to Dodger games for free. Yeah. And I was like, whatever, dude. Like, I like baseball. Screw it. It's my background. Yeah. I'll go. So I, I tried it. And they interviewed, like, 250 people. They, like, invited everybody to Dodger Stadium. And, like, dang. And, like, we went to – I took I did my interview. There's a picture out there on Instagram. Mm -hmm. the, where where, where I, can we find you on Instagram real quick? Oh, um, Javi Levas. Hey, Javi Levas? Yeah. L-E – how do you spell it? L-E-Y-V-A-S. Okay. And Javi. It's all one word. Okay. Um, my my interview was at the top deck of Dodger Stadium above home plate, like the very tippy top. I'd, I'd, I'd be sweating, dude. The, that was the, me. Like the very tippy top. Like you went all the way up to the top. There mm -hmm. was a there was a stereotypical stool and a table, and you sat there and you just look over to your right, and there's all of Dodger Stadium and the surrounding area. I feel like that's where they do commentary. No, they no. do it. They do it in the boxes below that. Blocks below that. I know because I went through. I went through all that. Oh, um, man. I mean, it must have been a sight too. Yeah, it was it was crazy, and I'm sitting there like, dude, it's it's two in the afternoon, it's mm -hmm. super bright out, it's in the middle of summer. Yeah, it's not some middle of summer; it's like in the middle of spring. Right, right, right. And I'm sitting here doing an interview in Dodger Stadium to work here. Like that was crazy. Yeah. And I blew that interview out of the park. They hired me on the spot. On the spot, they were just like, "Do you have an interest in cameras?" I'm like, "Yes." And I whipped out like my flip phone and I whipped mm -hmm. out my Kodak Easy. Why do you have Luis's controller? <laughs> you don't even know where that controller came from. I don't. Dang. Is that uh, <laughs> from Workout? That's an FD controller. Yeah, I was, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's an FD controller. Good luck with that. I didn't get it from Louis, so. Huh. Yeah, I know, because Luis gave it to somebody else who passed it on to you. That that's like the elder one, man. Damn, bro. Who <laughs> <laughs> passed on through the generations of game watch to, mains? You have to destroy <laughs> one person in order to get this. <laughs> they can only like it's like one of those deals where like there can only be one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> which, NorCal which one? Oh, a uh, shell shocked. What's about shell shocked? Uh, oh, shell shocked. Sorry, I'm just going. That's the one you're talking about. 
I wanted to go, but mm, like I wish they would reach out. I wish mm. I don't know. Commentary is kind of tough when they don't do commentary applications. It's like you want to do it, but you're if you're it's it's really weird. Just to give you guys like a quick background, like that's one thing I always appreciate about TGG and a lot of these other events too as well. Is when they do have commentary applications. I love that. That's my favorite thing because that gives me the chance to. Oh my God! Come on, Quan. Um, so that's the only keyboard we have. You know that, right? I need that to run the stream. Alright, I'm just taking from when it comes back. Anyways, um, yeah, he has his laptop. He's using the keyboard right now on his laptop. Yeah, I'll, I'll just unplug it when. Anyways, anyways, um, that's one of those deals where like. When they don't do commentary applications, oh my god, I like, I'm, I literally don't know what to do. Yeah, I've, like, I, I mean, same with media applications. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, see, and that's that's the thing where we can relate, right? When they don't do these kind of applications, like, I really, I want to go to this event, just have fun with it, obviously. Yeah. But, like, I want to go to this event, and I want to do commentary at it. Mm. But if I don't know where to start, it's kind of one of those deals where, like, can I even commentate? Am, am I allowed to? Like... It's it's kind of discouraging sometimes when you when you feel that way, especially like when people get when you find out someone else is going and they don't reach out for you. They're like, oh man, I feel a little left out. That that's when networking comes into play. Yeah, usually yeah. you network. That's it's, usually it's, the thing. That, that's that's what I did for a majority of my, I guess, career mm -hmm. throughout all of 2GC mm -hmm. was a lot of networking. Here's a lot of networking. Here is it's like. Oh yeah, it's June. I'm like I have I have five very solid galleries that I can share on a whim. Mm -hmm. And it's like I talk to somebody and they're like, "Oh yeah, what do you do?" I'm like, "Sure, let me show you." Yeah, let me show you five months worth of content. Let me show mm -hmm. you two and a half years worth of content right now. Mm -hmm. And I can just pull it on my phone and I just show them. They're just like, "Dang, what's your name?" Yeah, and that's it. That's you happened. Know? That's happened to me. Where I don't want to give it away mm -hmm. because I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it at all. But I've had I've been approached twice for specific events, not pertaining to Smash, um, but pertaining to, for lack of a better term, just put it out at a very good level, like oh. at a pretty good level. I see. Oh, um, yeah. And I got the interview. I didn't get very far, obviously, yeah. but I thought it was amazing because he asked me like, "What do you do?" And I'm like, "Well, let me show you. Like, here's three. You know, literally 2018. Here's like three days." Or like three events that I've done, and I show them each time they've done content. They yeah. like look at me. I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, it's a lot of content. Like, yeah. So, sometimes even then, it's like when you when you give them like when you give them certain amounts of content, mm -hmm. it's just like after a while they're just kind of like, yeah, they'll look at the first one and the first one's like really good, mm -hmm. and then they'll just like, that's it. Like they won't go any further. Like yeah, a, a norm, a, like how can I say it? Someone who's like asking, and I think that's how. A lot of people just get kind of lucky. It's like when people are asking about your content, mm -hmm. people ask about anyone's content. You know, it's, all, it's always the very first folder that you show them that should be your best content. Your best folder, and yeah. And then everything else after that is just like, here's moderate content, here's yeah. this and that. What I did for a really long time was I actually put my most moderate content first mm -hmm. and then my best content throughout. Ah, uh, that's all right. And then what happens was it got better and better over time. So they set their expectations low. You blow them out of the water, and at the end, when they're done, they're just like, "Wow, that was crazy. yeah, that's your strategy." Like, wow, that was yeah. crazy. And then suddenly they're like, they're hiring you. But mm -hmm. it can also work the opposite way to where if someone's lazy, they see all the moderate content, they're just like, "Oh meh," and then they don't bother. Yeah, you know, you have to really hook them in. So it's like finding that perfect balance of being able to like create that, I guess, content gradient. I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. so it's like when it gets better over time, like you just have to find that right balance. And that's like a lot of what I did throughout 2018. So it's like. That's uh, 2018, 2000, 2017. 17, right? Yeah, 2017 and 16 was a lot of me sort of experimenting with my own content. Like, I'm going to put very moderate photos as my cover photos for all of my albums. Right. And the real gems are hidden inside of there, which is where you're going to find it. Like, you're going to find yeah. the real good, amazing gems in there that tell an amazing story, mm -hmm. that have a lot of facial expressions, that tell, like, that say, hey, this is a moment. Yeah, that you need to. See. That's that's something like, that I definitely started to feel a lot with your content was when I would, whenever you, because I, I like to, I usually, specifically only like two people. <laughs> um, I forgot his name already, but he was over at um SCR. He's another photographer. We met him at SCR. Tall, He's got dreads. Tall glasses, dreads. Toby. Yeah, Toby. 
Yeah, you, you, Xenos, and Toby are probably the only three photographers I've ever met. Yeah. But whenever you guys put in, um, like you know, your albums and things like that for each of every, every event, I'm the I love to actually go through them. Yeah. Um, mostly because I took a, fil- a few film classes. And I love that when you can see a photo that you've taken or anyone else has taken, you can see the story behind it. Yeah. There's a story that, to be told. That, that's a lot. Yeah. That, that's a huge portion. Personal favorite was the one that you took of K-9 back in ESA. And he's like he's like sitting cross, cross-legged on the floor looking at the, at the stage and it's uh, Dreamland. And it's just, just a giant like back. Like, he's literally like sitting down in the middle right there. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, where he's wearing the Goku sweater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I thought that, that was the most perfect that, photo I've ever that, seen. That, that one was... That one was great because he just lost. Like, the yeah. story behind that one was he just lost. You could probably put it up over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and now when he just lost, he was pretty upset. But instead of, like, getting mad or yelling about it, he just goes and sits down and just kind of, like, hmm. Yeah. But he's, like, studying because he knows he's got to go against one of these guys and losers. Yeah. So he's just sitting there studying, and he's just sitting there like that, and I'm just like, dude, this looks nice. And like, that's, he's, that's he's, a story to be told, he's, too. He's fuming. Yeah. But I can see that determination. You could probably feel it when you look at that. Picture. Yeah, you so, you really do. So, like he wants more out of it than anything. So you so I, I just took that and I threw it out there into the world. And that was one of those things where I did not put that as a cover photo. That was a middle shot. Yeah. That was like in there with all the other all the other all the other stuff. And I was just like, this is really good. No one's gonna find this. And I know that when I'm done, I I, I, I I found it. I, I, know, <laughs> I, I found. I know it. that when or if I ever leave. I want to be able to. I want to be able to have people go back to the galleries and be like, mm-hmm. "Wow, he never showed this one off. This one's really good. Why didn't he show this one off?" Yeah. Like that's the gem. That's the special gem about it. It's yeah. like, you're gonna find the diamond this, in the rough. That's you know? the diamond, you know. And you're just gonna be like, "Well, I mean, damn, yeah. <laughs> you know, like just <laughs> damn, you know." It's it's just being relaxed, being yeah. being relaxed, being creative, you know, being loose and colorful. You know, it just just works. I feel like that's also. Man, I don't even know how to tie into that. I was just very well said. Not gonna lie. Did you? Did you want to? I don't know. We were kind of like jumped off the the Dodger. Um, Dodger. Did you want? Did you want to wrap that up? Or did I, you, I, that's pretty I, much I, all I you guess have to we say. can kind of. Like, I mean, that, that was more of a, like a history thing. Yeah. Into, like, that's so, still good though. I mean, that's, that's like, the point of the show though, because a lot of people don't know people's backgrounds. You know, they assume like you know. Some sometimes people ask me. It's it's a little rare, but every now and then people ask me like, "How did you?" start doing commentary at 2GG events and I told them you know I I went to final battle yeah I got my foot in the door no matter what because I really wanted to be there more than I I guarantee you and I don't want to like talk down on anybody at all I wanted to be on that commentary booth more than anybody like more 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 than anybody I, I was oh man dude I, I was determined I really was I was just a kid I just didn't know what to do I didn't know like anything at all uh, I, did, I barely even knew how to commentate, like barely, and I just wanted to be there no matter what. I remember getting up. Um, if you guys know who Rudafood is, he drove me to that event. Oh wow! Yeah, he drove me and him used to be part of a crew, so he drove me to that event, and we went there and I did commentary there, and I literally did all the way from pools to pretty much winners like sem- I don't want to say winners semis, but it was like winners quarters. Yeah, all of that. Uh, uh, a pretty good chunk of that. Um, I can't find the VODs anymore. I think they're, 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 they've been gone. Yeah, they've been um, gone. But I really went out there. And I just remember going there. And then, and that was my foot in the door. And then I went to Fire and Dice. And I remember... A funny funny thing about that event is that somebody somebody emailed me. I don't know how. Uh, I wish I still had it. Because I, I used to keep it around my old phone. Um, they emailed me asking me if I wanted to do Apex. But I was like, I ah, I'm not part of Clash Tournaments. I actually just, just happened to be there, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. That, that that that's that's hard. Yeah. Because it's like people assume that you're in like. It, it's it's hard when you do a really good job in certain in certain mediums mm-hmm. in places that you don't actually belong in. Like, yeah. Like you don't you're not a part of Clash. No, no, you no, weren't no, a part of Clash no, at the time, and no, it's no, like no. you did this really was. good content for them, and suddenly everyone assumes that you were. Yeah, like uh, to my to to that to that defense, some, some like, yeah. people assume that you were. Like they yeah. emailed you assuming that you were. Yeah, like, and I was like, I I thought I did okay. I didn't think I did great. You know, if I go back and I look at it, I was like, damn, dude, that was me back then. That was just, like everybody else. I was just a fish in a big, big, big pond. 
you know, and little by little, I just started going to Fire and Dice, and then I went on and off. I took a break. Um, I took a break. I didn't know what to do. To make a long story short, you know, I just, I remember watching um, Nursemaid, now Edmund, and Sedgehog, and they were doing commentary at Smash Factor. And I remember when I met Sedgehog several sagas before, and Edmund. I remember seeing him, and I just remember like, these two, I was like, damn, these are two people I literally, like, just saw out of the blue out of nowhere and now they're here at smash factor and that kind of brought me back that kind of brought me like yeah. you know i i want to come back to something that i truly enjoyed and i remember that day on um, 2015 i remember that passion that i had to sit down in that chair no matter what and that, that's what kind of brought me back is that that passion that drive and i feel like i always saw that from you like you literally just spend like most of the time talking about it right that passion that drive to like there's no content like this if i can do it then i should then i should and i shall i mean um yeah uh a lot of that drive came from, here's one really, really famous person in mm -hmm. Robert Paul, mm -hmm. who does all this content. I've seen him before. I've seen his shots before. I thought they were amazing. They've mm -hmm. got me into esports. And then I, then obviously it's like, what you see isn't always what you get. You know, you, you see all these amazing shots of all these arenas on Twitter, yeah. on Facebook or something. And then you go to these tournaments, you're just like, wow, this is nothing like I expected. But it's like, okay, you know, like people explain it to you a little bit better, but it's a lot of the drive came from you know if if i can do it then n nearly anybody else can mm -hmm. because everybody sees the world a little bit differently right. you know people obviously know the the backstory behind player 1 mm -hmm. as opposed to the backstory of player 2 so it's like they're obviously going to understand what player 1's going through they're going to understand the emotions they're going to understand why mm -hmm. All their friends behind them are going crazy because player one has never beaten player two before. Yeah. And it's like, this is obviously just an offhanded example, but it's like player one finally beats player two. Player one jumps up. It goes crazy. The classic FGC pop off. Like, you know, like, yeah. like FGC pop off. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's another photographer off on the side. who's just like looking at player two and is expecting a reaction. And there was no reaction because mm -hmm. all the reaction was in player one. This is like, it's kind of weird to have like a localized like area that I could just be like. I know these people. Yeah. I'm going to go do this. You know, because I understand the game. I understand everybody here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. And I think the very first picture I ever took was a picture of Spec and Wilio, who used to go to Center of the Universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wilio was, I believe, a PR Diddy Kong. Yeah, at, like, I the, remember. The first year. The first year, I remember the, that. The first year of the game coming out. I, I think it was like mid-teens. In the PR at the time? Ooh, dude, if I could go back and find that. I remember that this is when the P dude, this is when being... So, for those of you watching, and I hope if you guys come from that history, the PR at some point in SoCal consisted of literally the top 10 greatest players in the world. Yeah, in SoCal, yeah. It was like Zero, yeah. Mewtwo King. Zero, yeah, it was it literally was like the top... Zero, Mewtwo King, Larry, Lur, Tyrant. Tyrant, like... And it's like all these other players. Yeah. It's like stupid good, and we're sitting there like, what? So, if you got... I remember if you got into the PR... That meant so much. Yeah, no, because you no, not only getting on the PR, getting on the SoCal PR. Yeah, getting on the SoCal. It's like if you hear someone's on SoCal PR, that automatically like bumps them up like yeah. two or three. It had hours. it had a lot of weight, dude. It it, 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 had carried, tons it of weight. carried a lot of weight to it. Mm -hmm. Um, sure, I, I, sure, that, yeah, that, was, said, that was crazy. Yeah, like, those those were those were the days when people would come out to locals and not sit around fifteen people only. Say Smash Four is dead when they're the ones killing. I know you know enough of that rant, yeah. but you get the point though. Yeah, uh, you were no, saying Spe Spe Spec and Wilio took a yeah, photo. Yeah, no, yeah, I took a photo of Spec and Wilio on my iPod Touch. There was mm. a lot of backlight. There was like they they had their backs towards like curtains, mm -hmm. and the curtains were open, so there was like a lot of light coming mm -hmm. through. I took a picture of them because Wilio had his hand on him like this, and he was laughing. They were both laughing, and I took that picture, and that was like Wilio's or Specs profile picture for a good two or three months mm -hmm. and that felt good to see because they yeah. were just laughing it up and i'm just like dude like i know those two i know why they were laughing yeah like i can make something of this mm -hmm. and then over time obviously you just get better with everyone's story because the more and more you get into smash it, it's weird how that is because like everyone sees smash in like a bottle like a bottleneck like they only see them as like this really small community in comparison to everything else yeah and it's like you get into it, and suddenly there's so much more. Yeah, there's so much more to it. I, I, and it's like, like for lack of a better term, I kind of tell people 
it's really weird compared to it, but I, I do see us as, in a sense, the FGC's little brother. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the FGC's little brother because if you compare, you know, Smash to Capcom or Dragon Ball Fighters or any of the other ones, you know, they have their own cup. You know, Capcom has the Capcom Cup for Street Fighter Five. You know, yeah. Dragon Ball Fighters has the Dragon Ball Fighters World, you know, championships. Injustice has the, the whole thing. You know, Smash is probably the only one that doesn't really have it until 2017 came along when we had the TGC. Yeah, you know, something that thought that we could never be achieved in that world became suddenly much bigger in scope yeah you know so I, I always tell people for that for that purpose i always say it smashes you're right it's very bottleneck you go through it looks very thin and you know how difficult to get in but once you get in it's so much bigger i'm so sorry not yeah no th there was so much more to the community and i was like obviously at the time i was just like i only know these people mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna take pictures of these people and it's like I only I only stuck with what I knew for a really long time. Yeah. Like I only went to tournaments that I knew. I rarely ventured out of my comfort zone to go to a region that I never knew. Mm -hmm. um, I think even when I went to Center of the Universe, I drove from Southgate, from the Los Angeles area, only on the streets. Only the streets. Dang. <laughs> I never took any freeway. I, yeah. I was too scared to drive on the freeway. So what makes you think I'm going to go to freaking Vegas or something? <laughs> the, you the, know? One, the one I like, went to... The coach who I went to, I took a Amtrak. I went all the way oh, from North yeah. Hollywood down to Union Station, down to the Amtrak, got down there, had to walk about 20 minutes, mm -hmm. um, then I got there. Yeah. No, that, I wanted to go so bad because everybody's told me, like, Kotu is like one of the best tournaments you can go, go to. Yeah. Kotu was an amazing experience. It was, it was, a, to me, it was an amazing experience coming into it. Yeah. Oh, because definitely. It's definitely a good place to start. And then now we're just kind of like, here we are. Found, we have, found, we have a better foundation. Yeah, and that that's that's what I feel like the community like has gotten that, itself that, into. Yeah, within that, those that, three years, that's just where we are, and just like in just one game. Mm -hmm. Like we have all, we have the new game coming out, and obviously everyone's very excited, and I feel like everyone's a little bit. Too, mm, hopefully, people e don't. E everyone's a little bit too excited in yeah. a sense because they. Ex they're going to expect Ultimate to come out, and they're automatically going to expect themselves to be better. Yeah. Because they, they apparently have a clean slate when I'm in sitting here like, no, that's not the real deal. It, that's not the real deal because I feel that if you look at Zero, Nairo, and a lot of other these other players, their resume goes far as back as Brawl. You know, they play that game like there was no tomorrow because there was no tomorrow. There was To them, to them there was no other Smash game yeah. aside from Brawl. And they played to the very end of it, yeah. you know, and that got them to the spot that they are today. Yeah. You just don't get good from starting at ground zero. You literally have, a lot of these people do have backgrounds. I, I hear that. I hear the phrase, oh, wait till ultimate. If you wait, way, yeah. way too much. No, nah, way too much. It's like they lose and they say, wait till ultimate. I'm like, that's not going to fix your problems. That's not going to fix like, your problems. If you're lacking neutral, if you're lacking punish game, if you're lacking mix-ups, you're, you're literally just telling telling I, your I, opponent like... I just hear that way too many times. Yeah. And it's, oh, it, more it, so it, than it, ever. It, it, it annoys me. Every, every single day. Every single day, every tournament that I go to, at least three times every tournament. Mm -hmm. From three different individuals, and that bugs me. But it's like it's not. It's neither here or there. We what? I mean, um, SoCal sleeps right now. That's that's what I have to say. SoCal yeah, sleeps. They're, they're resting right now. Yeah, it, but it, um, it's not like any other region where like they're probably still. I don't know any other region in particular, but like, if I wish other, I wish SoCal was still as active as ever. You know, as it was when the game just came out. Yeah, it is. It is. It really just is what it is. Yeah. No, it, I have to. Um, I accept that for the most part. But, I mean, I guess if we're going to circle back to the whole Dodgers and Angels thing, mm -hmm. um, I was very established in the scene back then mm -hmm. in in a weird way as just the guy with an iPod. Mm -hmm. And I think I worked with the Dodgers for about a good two, three months. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted me to start doing Angel Stadium. So I started doing Angel Stadium. Mm -hmm. And that was... That was when I knew I didn't really need to do that anymore. Yeah. Because it was like I'm already I already know how to use a DSLR. Mm -hmm. I the season's ending. Both teams are not doing very good. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, at the time they weren't <laughs> doing very good. 
And I was like, I don't really see them going into the playoffs. And I was taking a look at the standings, and I was like, they're not going to get into the playoffs. Yeah. And I'm driving from I'm driving from Dodger games on Sunday mornings down to Angel games on Sunday nights. Yeah. At the same day, running five hour shifts in between. Yeah, the money's good, but is it worth it? I was just like, I'm sitting there like, is it worth it? I'm driving a car that I don't like to go on the freeways with. Yeah. And I don't get paid until the end of the month. Oh yeah, and I, I was like, I was like, dude, like this is this is a struggle. This yeah, is, and that was a lot of twenty. That was a lot of twenty fifteen going into sixteen. Was it was a lot of me taking pictures at a venue where I only had two dollars in my pocket. Yeah, and I had to figure out a way. Did you feel that that was more fulfilling than you would say the Dodgers Angels situation? It was definitely more fulfilling because I had a lot of support. Mm -hmm. But as like the Dodgers and Angels thing where I was like, I was at work and my boss was just kind of like over your shoulder, just yeah. kind of making sure you got the numbers that you need. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting there like, because because that's how it worked at the Dodgers and Angels thing was if you didn't get a certain amount of photos, because they kept track of how many you took. Yeah. If you didn't get past a certain amount after a certain time, they just cut you for the day. So, yeah, so you had a quota. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, you have to get 40 in four hours. I'm like, mm -hmm. that doesn't seem too bad. And then suddenly you're realizing that nobody wants to take anything. Nobody wants to take pictures. Nobody wants their photos taken. Yeah. You know? And it's like, oh, it's four hours and I have 26. I guess I'm going home early. And yeah. go home early. It's like, oh, this time it's two hours, 40 photos. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. 90% of us were just cut for the day and went home. And one yeah. person got super lucky. Because she was in a very high traffic area that she chose at random. Because we were all just given spots mm -hmm. at random. We were all just given spots. Oh, shoot. So it, it was whatever. It was pulling. It was literally like you have to pull the, either the high straw or the short straw. And most of the time. Yeah, most of the time I, I drew the short straw. Yeah. I, drew the, I drew the good straw opening day. And I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, opening day, I was obviously there for like four hours. Um Opening day, I was there for four hours. I was there for two hours before the game starts and then two hours into the game. Right. And that was it. Um, that's usually how it worked for every game. Two hours before, two hours into it. Mm -hmm. At the third inning, you're at the third or fourth inning, fifth inning, you're done. You know, mm -hmm. you go home. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I was unplugged. I don't oh. know. For, at, just for, like, audio purposes. Yeah. At the third or, at the third or fourth inning, you're done. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you're going home. Um, whatever. You know, it's fine. But... I remember going to that job and I was commuting back and forth and I wasn't taking any of the streets. My tank was on E and I had to get to the Angel Stadium. Yeah. And I was like, I, I, can't, I can't do it. Yeah. I don't get paid till tomorrow. And I'm like, can I get an advance? Can I get at least like 20 bucks so I can go so I can go get gas? Yeah. They're just like, no, you can't do that. And I was like, what? They're like, no, no, you can't do that. You have to figure it out. Figure it out. Dang. So That's so I, I, got on, I got on the freeway for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. Got on the freeway. I got to where I got to Alameda because I got off in Alameda. Mm -hmm. I want to get in Alameda. I want to get onto another street. I forgot what street I wanted to get on, but I knew that that one would take me all the way to Anaheim. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I can just get to, and Al if I could just get to Alameda, then maybe I could yeah. make it to my parents' house and I could say, Hey, can you give me a ride? Yeah. 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 I didn't make it. Mm -hmm. The car sputtered and it died before I even got there. And I'm sitting there. No money in my pocket. Yeah. Like, oh, are you looking up that street? If because my uncle actually like just usually I don't like to look at videos or anything when um, when I'm recording, um, but it is a bit of my uncle lives like literally in that general area. Um, if I'm not mistaken, like Dodger Stadium is like by Cypress Park, isn't it? No, it's I'm trying to remember where it exactly is. Nah, it's okay. You don't have to look it up. But I remember I haven't been to like I remember doing that, and I'm sitting there like, dude, this is you know what's cool. crazy? Hello, Dodger Stadium. Mm. This is an avenue. For Vin Scully. Yeah. Vin Scully, of course. Yeah. I, Voice of the Dodgers. I, I met him in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Voice of the Dodgers. That's the craziest thing. Like, they got a whole avenue named after him. Yeah. That's they they like got a whole street named No, I met him in an elevator. At my, uh, like, second day on the job. Mm -hmm. I met him in an elevator. I would have froze. I, was, like, I, I, I froze, and I thought for a second, wait, he's freaking Vin Scully. He's not, like, anything crazy. Yeah. So I just went, hey, I'm a big fan. He's like, hey, thanks. And then he just shook hands, and then just I got off on my floor. And you can do commentary all you want, bro, but if you got a, if you got your own avenue named after you, that's uh, I mean, all another that, level. That, that's the ultimate goal in the end. Yeah. That's not so, yeah, that's, so for those of you who aren't familiar, and if you're watching this from out of, from out of region, oh, um, Dodger Stadium is literally located by Chinatown, by downtown LA. Anaheim is literally located 
roughly, I want to say, 15 minutes before you get to ESA. Yeah. To um, Esports Arena. No, that's actually pretty close. It's, yeah. about, it's about 10 minutes away from ESA. Yeah, 10 minutes away it's from about ESA. About 10, so minutes. that's literally you driving from downtown LA to, I would say, Disneyland yeah. to, make it, to make it a better reference. Yeah. It's so you driving all the way from downtown LA to Disneyland. Um, bad, with traffic on an empty tank. On an empty tank. Yeah, because I didn't. So get I, I, and I'm living in SoCal all my life, dude. Living in the three two three to go anywhere from the three two three upwards was a pain. Yeah. The three two three downwards was even worse. Yeah, no, it it was it was a pain, and it's like I just had to figure it out. My bo- my boss there wasn't really wasn't willing to help me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, I, I don't know what to do. And then after the first month, when I'm really struggling, they were like, hey, we lost your bank information. Oh my god. We don't, we don't have your bank number. We don't have your transfer thing. Mm-hmm. We can't pay you this month. We'll pay you next month. And I'm sitting there like, dude, what? Can't you just make me out a check? You know, like, yeah. That's, I know that, that I was just like, can I just get that in paper? Can I just get that in cash or something? Can I get something? Yeah. And they're just like, no, we can't. We do everything through direct deposit. I'm sitting there like, dude. So I had to go back to the bank. I had to go get my whole information again because I didn't know how to, I didn't know how that worked. Yeah. So I just got it again and I went back to my boss and I gave him the copy and I was just like, all right, cool. You know, is everything good? Are we all good? They're like, yeah, but you're not getting paid till next month. For two months, I had two months worth of pay from going to both games. Oh my god! Almost twice a day. Paycheck was fat, but at the end of it, I would have been still no, pissed. No, but with that paycheck, I quit. I got. I. I'm not gonna say the money. I'm not gonna say the amount. Well, did you feel? Can you can you say if you felt comfortable about it? Where you where you were like, this was a good amount, but I'm out. It was enough for me to buy my very first DSLR, a laptop, and was able to fill up my gas tank seven times over. Okay. It was good money. Okay. And I was able to eat, like, eat good, like. I, I was. I, I'm, I'm thinking I, about like that first I, paycheck I, meme when everybody gets the first paycheck. Everybody's walking out eating like at a fine dining restaurant. Yeah, no, no <laughs> it was. It wasn't anything that like that. But you were able to just feed yourself well. But it was definitely like if my friends wanted to go out to go get something to eat because at that time I was with the FD guys. I was with Final Destination people, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they treated me really, really well. They welcomed me in, and they would. That's same way Final Destination people. They, they they would go out all the time. Yeah. They were like, "Hey, we're gonna go to this 24-hour ramen place that's like down the, down down the street." Apparently, there was a 24-hour ramen place where you go in you take off your shoes and you like sit on the floor and you eat ramen Ooh. apparently like that was twi- I, that was that reminds me of the place in little Tokyo but I'm not thinking the same place. yeah that was 24 hours mm. so after every FD tournament we played like a, a lot of Mario Kart a lot of Mario Party and after that we just go eat ramen yeah and at the time I had that job and I was just like dude like I can actually go out with you guys and actually eat the mm. same food as you guys and not have to worry about hey I only have three dollars on me yeah can you either spot me or I'll just stay here and yeah. that was my struggle for like a good portion of 2015 into 16. Yeah. And that was hard. That was rough. And I think at the time, this was when MSM was starting too. Yeah. And I think that was, was it the Gardena venue or was it the card shop? This, this was the card. Bell, this was the Bellflower card shop, shop venue. venue. Yeah. TCS cards, I believe. I, I remember hearing about it. I just never had like, living from the valley, I had like no way of going down. No, I, that was off the 105 freeway. Uh, you get off on Bellflower, I believe, and then you just go all the way down to like a certain street, and you just make a left, and it was there. Mm. Tiny venue, super small. I just bought a DSLR, and I was going ham. <laughs> I went, I went to that place, <laughs> MSM zero through like MSM twenty or whatever. Like that was all me. Yeah. And I had all these galleries. I went to OBVN where I met Zero for the first time. OBVN was a tiny card shop tournament on a Tuesday. The funny, the, the the ones I went to were like I remember going to KO Gaming Lounge or Lowe's. KO Gaming Lounge. I used to work there too. You used to work there. Okay. I used to work there too. Like Smash, Smash got me a job there. Funny enough, Smash has gotten me quite a few th- things that I never thought I would have. Meeting a lot of people I never thought I'd meet. Yeah. Hanging out with people I never thought I'd hang out. Having friends I never thought I'd have. You know, it's that's a whole topic for another time. But you were saying, yeah, no, it, it's. I, w- I started going to all these MSMs, and then I believe that 2GG was going to be doing coverage for, or it's going to be streaming one of the KOTUs. Because KOTU at the time had a stream, but not a very popular stream. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't big at all. It wasn't very big. It was like two, three viewers at a time. And it was only people who just couldn't make it to the tournament that day. Yeah. 
and 2GG decided to to I guess they're going to be hosting a tournament there, or mm. I guess not hosting a tournament. They're going they're to be, be providing the stream, providing the stream. And I think right before that, that's when Champ like finally messaged me, and he's like, "Hey, I've seen all the content you've been doing for MSM. Mm -hmm. You know, we could really use someone like you to be a camera person for 2GG." And originally, it was going to be photos and videos, yeah, interviews, things like that. And I was like, well, in order for me to do an interview, I need a mic input on my camera, which I didn't have. Mm -hmm. So I worked my butt off for another two, three months after he approached me about it. I obviously said yes. So I was 2GG at the time. Mm -hmm. I go to KOTU. I get my very first taste of what a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens was because mm -hmm. all I used was the normal kit lens, which isn't very good. Yeah. Um, it was 3.5. And 3.5, 1.8, 3. Point, basically, how can I explain it? The lower the number, the more blurry the background is on whatever subject you're taking. Mm -hmm. So they look more professional. So you want it lower or do you want it I higher? Want, you want it lower. Because okay. lower also makes it more sensitive to light. The, yeah. Uh, the way I'm seeing it is like in film, you want 70 millimeters big so you get a good picture of the background, but yeah. you kind of want smaller if you want to focus on the subject. Well, that's... that's um, but that's film camera. That's different. That's a whole different lingo from, um, from no, what no, I'm saying. I'm talking about f-stop. Okay. F-stop is the focus point. Like the focal okay. And it's like the lower the number, the more blurry the background becomes. Okay. And also how much more sensitive it is in, in low light. So, so just, like just to sum it up, you want it, you want a smaller one to focus on an individual subject. Yes. And you want a bigger one for the bigger picture. Yes. Okay. So it's like if I'm doing 3.5, it's going to take you. It's also going to put some stuff in the background a little bit more in focus mm -hmm. in comparison to 1.8 where it's all on you. Like a keyhole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you can only see through that. So it's like, okay, you know, that was my very first taste of like new camera equipment. And I'm sitting there taking pictures on my on my, my really old, not my old one. Well, yeah, my old one because I bought it used. Mm -hmm. I bought like my T3, my very first camera. I bought that used. And I'm like using this brand new lens on this really old camera. And I'm sitting there like, dude, I need, I need to fix my equipment. Yeah. I need a job. I mm -hmm. need another job because at this time, I already quit Dodger and Angel Stadium because I was like, dude, I can't, I can't handle this commute. It's too much of a struggle for me. If you guys aren't going to budge in any direction, then I cannot help you guys. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe if I had a previous job before this and had some money saved up, maybe I could have done it. Yeah. Um, so I left that job. and. Um, As for, like, for me, I don't know how you feel because that's that was my um, my prerogative kind of when I left. As of this video, I used to be a bartender. Yeah. So I, that's That was kind of like my prerogative. Like I left bartending, not because of the paycheck, but because it literally had me doing a lot that it didn't feel as fulfilling as it used to when I first started. When I first started, it was just, it was great. It was a beautiful experience. But then, like, not to, like, put those things down, just the takeout and everything that comes with it if you live in 2018. So much work was being handled on me and the pressure. And it's not that I couldn't handle it. It's because they perfected, they expected me to perform the same way I would do even better when the times were excrementionally I'm sorry excruciatingly rough yeah no it's so I understand it, like it's just bad timing yeah it's, that's all that's all my other job was it's just a lot of bad timing and after that 2DG, for me leaving it was good timing after, <laughs> after that after that 2DG approached me um, I obviously said yes because mm -hmm. they were the biggest thing around and they, they were the ones who was hosting MSM and obviously I knew a lot of these people already so it didn't really yeah. bother me and that was when I found out that JMX was in there and then I don't think Strides was in it just yet. Um, I think it was just him and J-Max, and then it was... Uh, if you watched... Now, this is the greatest yeah. part about it. This is where I get to plug in episode yeah. one. If you have not seen episode one, pause here. Go watch episode one. Learn the history. Yeah. A little bit of a background history of 2GG. Then come back. Yeah. From this point on. So go on. Because not even I know. Because like this, I this, never this, bothered asking. I, I don't want to say it because I don't want people to watch episode one. I, I, will t I will tell you this, though. It goes... It goes as far beyond than you and I thought. It's like some history that I kind of didn't know that TGG had. Oh, yeah. And it, no, it's not bad. Nothing bad. Nothing bad at all. It's all great. Um, and it's just great to know that, that that it has been involved with the scene from some of the most amazing moments from the very beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, it's... I, I remember reading a couple of articles on Champ. Yeah. Like that, so, I mean... So, go, go watch episode one. Me yeah. and Jamie talk about it. Oh, gosh. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, it was just a, uh, and it's just been kind of history from there. I mean, it's like work, working with 2GG has been great. You know, mm -hmm. like learning, learning. I've been 
ever since I joined them, I've been learning like exponentially, like more. About, you, and about you've done, my, you've done about, exponentially oh more. Gosh. Yeah, and then uh, we talked about it before we started recording. Um, do you mind if I say it? Yeah, you can say it. All right. So if you guys don't know, actually, you know, I really use. I I feel excited to say it, but I'm not gonna lie. Having hearing you say, it, I feel like that's <laughs> that does more honor because when I when you told me the day of the event, I, first of all, I was really happy about being at that event overall because I had a great I had a great time. I was at the Link House. I was surrounded by a lot of links. Yeah. Um, but it was a pretty big house. Uh, my good friend Arrow, uh, Nicholas, he like he, inv he invited me to be part of the link house. So we all went. It was a lot of fun. Meeting all these people. Hanging out with uh, Scizor. Hanging out with all these links from all these other areas. You know, shout outs to my friends. All my link mains like Element, Vorolol. Uh, I got to meet um, Kyron. Oh my god. It's a funny story that goes with that. Um, you know, I got to meet a lot of, a lot of players. But then that I already started having a lot of fun. I started right there, but I was having a lot of fun. But then you just told I went to the event, and usually whenever I see, whenever at the event, I usually approach you and we talk for a little bit and we like to yeah, hang out yeah, yeah. for a hot minute. Then you told me the big news. Yeah, you told me just out of the blue. I was just minding my own business. <laughs> we we're just talking, and I, th I think you. No, no, no. Uh, I think you, you, uh, you, you, you like. I, I, you said I needed to do something. And I was like, "What did you need to do?" And I was like, uh, just, "Just chat with me for a second. And then you broke the news to me, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Um, so that explains because I saw the photo first of all. I saw it, yeah. and I was like, "Okay, I've been following him for a while." <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong. When I saw this photo, I was like, "Okay, this quality looks so familiar," and I was like, "It could have only been done by one man." Which one was it? Uh, it wasn't the first one that posted, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I was like, it could only have been done by one man. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Maybe it is him. I don't know. I don't know if there are any reps around. You know, I, to my knowledge, I, I, was, at the, I was at the hotel at the time. Well, yeah. I, technically we were like at a mansion, but I was at the mansion at the time. Yeah. I'll wait, to, I'll wait to see who it is. Maybe I'll ask, and then I asked you, and then you told me. Yeah. Uh, I was the official Nintendo photographer for Hyrule Saga. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm shooting with Nintendo at the time. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's but an honor, dude. That, like that was, that was actually insane because like, I I won't go into details, but they definitely found my content and they went, "This is our guy." Yeah, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, oh, just have the TO take pictures on their phones. Mm -hmm. It was literally like, we want this quality over here yeah and i was like wait what here's the email and i'm like what <laughs> here's what we want in the email i'm like wait what i looked at the emails it was official nintendo of america emails and i'm sitting there like i would have printed that out framed I'm, it I'm, I'm, like, I'm like whoa wait a minute what and it's like yeah welcome and i'm like like I'm sitting there like what I'm sitting there like what the heck just happened? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, time to go to work. Yeah. You know, like I'll talk about this later. Time to go to work. So I made, yeah. I made a Google Drive. I paid some money for for a little bit of extra space because mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what they wanted. So I just I said, like, here's a Google Drive. You guys have access to this whenever you guys want. I'm gonna put some photos in there. And you guys can pull it out and you guys can use it for whatever. Yeah. They're working remotely, and I'm sitting there like, what in the world, dude? Like this is actually insane to me. And I'm sitting there thinking like this is just another client to me. But at the same time, I know all my friends are going to be so thrilled. I know everybody's going to be so thrilled. I, I was thrilled, Everybody's going to be was, so excited about this. And I'm sitting there like, dude. Like, I think that was great because I heard that news. And then coincidentally, like 30 minutes later, I, I was slightly nervous because I wanted to... Um, I wasn't happy with how I commented on Switch OS. People told me I was fine, but it's not, not important. I, I was... I wanted to make sure I performed the great at Hyrule Saga. So I heard that news. So 30 minutes later... I go on the mic, and I remember like, damn, dude, this is already a great event, and I haven't, I, to me, to me, like, I, this is already a great event, I haven't even gotten on the mic, which is what I want to do with so much, yeah. and it's already been a great event. Yeah, no. So I remember hearing that news, it was it's, like. It's like, being chosen by them, of everyone else, mm -hmm. was like, that was like a gigantic honor. That's, yeah. That's like, and that was also something that I didn't need. Mm -hmm. at the time right? because I've already been featured on ESPN yeah I was already featured on Red Bull I was mm -hmm. featured again on ESPN mm -hmm. I was featured in Yahoo Esports and I was featured on Smash.gg right the last one was Nintendo 
So I, you, I wanted, you checked off I, every I, box. Now that I like, I didn't think about it as a checklist at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just something that I just kept in the back of my head. Yeah. I never kept the checklist of, I, I feel like that's shallow. I feel, yeah, like, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's like, that just defeats the purpose of. Now, why now, now I feel shallow. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I, I think that that defeats the purpose of why you're doing something. Right. If you're doing something just to check some names off a list, then you're doing it wrong. Right. If you're doing something because you're passionate and because you love every minute of it, and it's like you can't wait to get home and perfect whatever it is that you're doing. Mm. If you're not doing that, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. I feel like you should take that with everything that you do in life. Whether you're commentating, whether you're taking photos, whether you're a videographer, I feel whether you're, yeah, I agree. Whether you're just a random like sound guy that works in a random indie film somewhere in Connecticut, I don't know. I'm just making that up. Yeah, you know, if you really love that, you should be passionate. Most about people it. come you from Idaho. Love that. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever, man, potatoes. <laughs> Yo, Most people. Oh, know? as a recording of this video, I have no idea who won. If you guys probably no, see it on Twitter, I, I have no idea who won. Like Somebody won this. No, we're not alive. Look at him, man. <laughs> 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 we we gave this po we gave this pretty awesome Kingdom Hearts poster away. I'm like, oh, it's kind of nice. If I had some space in my actually, my roommate would want it more than I, am. cause she she likes Disney. She she works for Disney, I and mean, we got some Predator posters nice. as well. Sick. Um, that is pretty shallow. Yeah. I, I I didn't think of it that way, but we were talking about this, man. No, you good? Did you get chill? Oh, okay. oh, okay. Well, there you go. Confession number one coming from the hat worker over here that he is shallow. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like anything you should do, you should do with, I can't remember the name of, I can't remember the tweet exactly, so don't ask me to quote it. Yeah. Um, and for time's sake, I don't want to go ahead and look into it, because we've we got to wrap up soon, yeah, just, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. just to start hot. But, it's but um, Fiction put out a tweet about commentators and social climbing. And I remember somebody asked me, what do I think about that tweet? And I told them, with anything that you do, you should always not do it in here you should do it here because you should be passionate about what you do and if it's truly something that you have passion for i feel like that reflects on your work yeah. and i feel like that reflects on who you are and how you do it if you're definitely just objective based and yeah it's like because being in here is objective based being in your mind that means you you have a you have a set goal you just want to do it and do it but also like and there's nothing wrong with having goals but it shouldn't it I don't know. There's, there, there's a difference. It's like you should you should obviously have a goal. Mm -hmm. If you're a Twitch streamer, you should obviously be aiming yeah, to yeah, have yeah, a lot of, of subscribers and things like that. So you know, it's part of the job. But I feel like something like actually no, I. You just have gotta have the right goals. You can't you just, have you, to, you, yeah. I feel like that's you what can't just do something just to get another notch on your belt just to move on. You know? Yeah, you shouldn't just be that's doing true. that just to build up a reputation. You know, just. It's silly. It's it's silly to me. And it's like, no, oh, I don't want that, you know? Yeah. This is like, I, di I didn't want to think about crossing everything off the list. And then I started thinking about it when I got approached by the guys at Versus. When I got approached by them, I was like, wait a minute, I'm going to be featured on Nintendo. Mm -hmm. So that means, well, what else have I been featured on? Red Bull, ESPN, Yahoo, mm -hmm. Smash.gg, you know, um, a bunch of other stuff. And now I'm going to be with Nintendo. Wow, that's everything that I've ever wanted. Yeah. Why should I continue? Mm -hmm. And then that just started like this really downward spiral of mm -hmm. like kind of losing that passion because I realized I have hit everything that I've ever wanted to hit. That's yeah. And I and like that really ever since then up until maybe a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. I was just like feeling really like I noticed I started to see you I'll, less I'll, and less at events. I, I was feeling really down because I'm just mm -hmm. sitting there like, I've done everything I ever wanted. You know, I, I did everything I ever wanted. I have no real goal right now. Mm -hmm. So I stopped going to a lot of events. Mm -hmm. I started taking up more hours at work because I was just like, well, I mean, I might as well. Yeah. Because I don't feel that passion anymore, you know? But it's just like definitely a product of you don't have to worry about that right now. But mm -hmm. you started worrying about it and now now you're just kind of make, made yourself kind of sad yeah and it definitely like that hurt me to a certain extent because i was like oh i mean it obviously hurt me just being away from the scene but it's like i started working on a lot of other personal projects i started working on a lot of like video stuff rebranding like rebranding myself yeah. and kind of like trying to bring the spark back in some way shape yeah. or form you know just trying to bring that back and then it's just a weird limbo phase right now where it's like I've kind of done everything. I'm not really 
fully out of that funk. Yeah. I just recently put up my website like maybe a week ago. Mm-hmm. But it was, def- it was I'm, definitely... And, and I remember we talked about it a while back. Like, well, you... Before you did, you know, Hyrule Saga and all that. I remember we spoke like a while back. Like, what else What else should I be... What else should I do? Like, what do you... And I remember I told you, like, oh, maybe take photos of cosplayers. You know, take yeah, photos of I, yeah. I, I started pick, I started picking that up a lot more, too. I yeah. Started, I started picking up cosplay. I started, cre- I started looking into a little bit more... Of a creative sort of seasonal kind of style, I yeah. started, and, and I liked, I liked, I liked the content you've been putting out recently. I like that you, like you said, seasonal. I liked how you took a few photos and they were summer based. Yeah, and then you said fall. I think you just put it out like fall October based. So I like how you're doing things in seasons. Yeah, just keep it, things a little fresh. It, it was that was kind of something I wanted to do to sort of reignite that spark that I had before mm-hmm. because. After I've done everything, it's just like the fire built up too much, and then they got put out after the tournament was yeah. over. And it's like, you know, it's just kind of a little bit of like simmer and a little bit of some ashes just left behind. And you know, you just, you just you and know, you're trying to you spark need, it you from need the to ashes. Throw something back in there to mm-hmm. reignite it. And I'm sitting there like, what can I throw into my to this metaphorical fire that will make me want to do it again? Yeah. So I started going out. I I I met someone and I started going out with them and mm-hmm. I started taking pictures. You know, I let them kind of take the wheel in the relationship. Like, you know, I want to experience something new. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let you take care of everything. I'm obviously going to be doing my part. But if you want to do something, if you want to go somewhere, anywhere at all, let's go. Yeah. Because I need something. I'm empty right now. I need something. So we start going to the beaches. We start going to beaches and mountains and all these other crazy places, some rivers, like out out in Big Bear. And we started going to, like, another river that's out off the 60 freeway somewhere. Yeah. That was kind of a disappointment because it was really <laughs> hard to get to. But it was... It, and and that put me through... Going through a couple months of just kind of trying to find something new to do with my life was kind of difficult for me. Because yeah. it was like, here I am. I'm working at Salvation Army now. You know, I'm thoroughly enjoying this job. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Hyrule Saga is coming up. I got the news about who I'm going to be working with, and that's yeah. really, really cool. I can't talk about it, but I'm really excited. And knowing that I reached that pinnacle point when I learned about it back in, I think, May, or mm-hmm. when I learned about it back in, I think, the beginning of April was kind of that start of a somewhat downward right. um, feel for me because it's like, dang, I already reached it. I already reached the top. Yeah. So. I started doing a lot of, of other stuff. You know, I wanted to do summer collection. I wanted to do seasonal collections for a while, but I never had the passion enough to do it because I was so much into esports. Yeah. Like, this was an idea that I wanted to do since 2017. And it was like, but you have a big tournament every single day. Yeah. And not only that, but you have some sagas that are within a week and a half of one another. Oh, yeah. I remember 2017 was just... It was like, here's a saga. Here's two this, weeks of yeah. rest. Here's another saga. Yeah, and here's another couple of weeks. Here's another, like, another three weeks. The of most rest. I ever experienced like a break from the saga was like coincidentally like maybe three, three and a half weeks. With with us, it was like two and a half. With us, it was like two, maybe a week and a half of like, okay, we're done. Now we gotta go into full throttle mode and think about everything that we need to do for this next theme. Yeah, and it was like some themes that weren't even thought of. It was actually crazy. Like some stuff just wasn't even. I thought felt that's of what also like, made Smash. So much fun, so much more enjoyable yeah. at that point, and I feel like that's probably what happened to Smash. Is 2017, the peak was hit. I felt almost, yeah. you know, like for for I don't I don't know if you know for better or for worse, but I, I definitely felt like in 2017 that peak was hit so well that to come out in 2018 and ask what peak can we hit next, it was so difficult. It's like what peak are we hitting next? One saga in June. Okay, thanks, bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like, wait, what? Yeah. Like you just I, had, and, and but you just had 13 of them. 13 it's, of it's them. It's like, yeah, and? One that, was, that goes down in history as, as, as one of the greatest, actually, as the, into, in a lot of people's minds, the greatest Smash 4 event of all time Which was the Civil War. Oh, yeah. Come on, dude. That, that was... I don't even want to talk about freaking coverage for Civil War, dude. Uh, I, <laughs> it, give, give me a taste. Give me a taste before we go. Day one, I was on my feet for 18 hours. Dang. Day one was 18 hours because I got there at 5 in the morning mm-hmm. and I didn't get out of there until maybe like... Did you even eat? I obviously ate. Yeah. I had some breaks to eat, but I was on my feet for 18 hours. 
Two just going left I, and right. Yeah, photo I, here, went photo there, photo there. I went to the Airbnb. I went to Airbnb, slept for two hours, got right back up and did it again. Mm. And I did that for another for another maybe twelve hours. Yeah. And then I finally just sat down on the couch and I passed out for maybe an hour. Got right back up. Oh, it's the end of the day. Go back to the Airbnb, sleep for another two hours, come back again. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Was just like that every day for those three days. Yeah. Totally. Four. I wasn't. There was it, no MSM but, after. But, was but it was like. I don't remember. Okay, okay. But uh, it's like. But it wasn't just because of the tournament. It was also because of the hours that I put into editing on yeah. the side. Like, you don't think about that. But when you're editing, when your knees are constantly throbbing mm -hmm. and your ankles are constantly, like, throbbing and moving around and stuff, you're just sitting there like, uh, can I even keep going? Yeah. And I'm, I'm sitting there like, this is, like, the biggest tournament of the year. I have to keep going. <laughs> I think and it's, it's, like, the photos from that came out really good. I even mm -hmm. asked for assistance from, like, two other photographers. Yeah. And I like, they they gave me their content, and I'm sitting there like, I like it, but they're all out of focus. Mm -hmm. I, this isn't the quality of content that I would put out. Yeah, this isn't mine. People know this. This isn't my content. Mm -hmm. And I've always had this weird sort of grasp on my own content, where it's like, I partnered up with someone before, mm -hmm. and it and it turned out great for about two tournaments i did that for two sagas i partnered up with someone else mm -hmm. and i had them shoot and for the most part they came out really really good but then other things when i try to teach them new things outside of esports mm -hmm. and try to show them new things that they can bring into esports like learning how to use focal point and learning how to like how to create like learning how to capture something quick i never taught them that yeah. i kind of gave them the camera i gave them a lens and i said go crazy and they went and they went crazy but a lot of the shots were shots that I wouldn't normally use, but I had to use them anyway because I was just so crunched on time. Yeah. And, you know, Civil War was one of them. Civil War was the start of that. And then after that, it was the next two sagas. And after that, we just kind of stopped with that because I feel like we were in a we were in an area where these sagas are not as popular right now because we're in a little bit of a low point. Yeah. So we should probably, I should probably start taking over from now on and, and just do it from there. Yeah. And, um, and I felt that, just to reiterate, like, I felt Civil War was, like, I think it still goes down in history as, like, the highest entrance for a Smash 4 only event. Yeah. Because most, because everything else is, like, people no. can say, like, what about EVO? I was, like, EVO is FGC. That has multiple events under its banner. No, I'm pretty sure Frostbite had more. Frostbite? That year? Or the oh, year that after? Year. I think it was the year after. What was Sue? Whatever Sue was in? Oh, 2017, I believe. I believe that one had, like, 2000. 2000 names something like that they had like a they had like a crazy number mm -hmm. and um but still i mean like all together people will always it was 2000 actually. people always go back and look at civil war as this the coming of everything yeah together to one storyline it was definitely just the end of a storyline and the beginning of something else and yeah that tournament was so massive that it's actually it's a lot like how us smash players treat patches where it's like, oh, yeah, but he was really good. Was that pre-Civil War? Or, or post-Civil post -Civil War? War, yeah. Like that, that, <laughs> that's what, that's it, what everybody it, it was kinda, really it, asking. It, it kind of fixed that era. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. Yeah, it, add, it, added, a, it added a crazy. It added a period. You're right. right. It added it, a patch. It, it added an era. And I was like, dang. Like, now that, and now that era ends and now it becomes a new one. And after that, I just... After Civil War, I was like, okay, that was the biggest one of the year. I definitely can handle the next ones that are coming up. Yeah. So that's what I did. I just handled whatever I needed to handle, you know? Yeah. But speaking of eras, what do you, what do you, uh, just to close things up. What's up? What's, what's next in your era? What, where, where do you feel you'll be going next? Ultimates, you know, at the time of recording or in October, Ultimates mm. literally like around the corner. I, and the funny thing about that is, ult, I feel that Ultimate is a rush for a lot of TOs to just put out the next event. And there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like that could be careless a little bit. Or I feel like we should just, hey, let's give this a solid maybe two or three weeks and just wait <laughs> a bit to see what will come up as a rule set. Not just bring this out two weeks later and then we'll go, we'll go you know, we'll make it as we go. Like, no, that's, that's rushing a lot. No, there was, um... But what do, you, what do you think is the next era for you now that you've hit the high note, now they're on a come down machine... And now that you're trying to 
go back up again and find another high note to hit. Um, I kind of started that mm-hmm. already with the um with the Discord, with mm-hmm. the photographer Discord. Yeah, the esports. I I started a. I felt throughout my all my like I guess my years of working that there was a massive disconnect between people who wanted to start and people who were already established. There were definitely a lot Bring of, them all together, right? There was a lot of people who didn't know where to start. I, I met a lot of people who were like, they were just starting and now mm-hmm. they're like really good. Mm-hmm. But now they don't know how to take the next step or how to kind of step aside and be like, hey, let's let these new folks in. Because there's a lot of people who see my stuff and they come up to me and they say, hey. Commentary you know, doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I wish. Um, <laughs> so do I, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, we can all talk about that some other th- There day. was a lot of stuff. Like, even at Civil War, I had, like, three or four people approach me. It's like, hey, I love your stuff. You know, I wanted to come down here for mm. for this tournament because, you know, I saw all the I saw all the sagas before this. You know, all the pictures were so good. You know, you, you're doing a great job. You know, I love your content. You know, how can I get started? Yeah. And I'm sitting there like. That's what I felt that I, I needed, too. I, I'm sitting there. I, I can easily tell them, buy a camera, go to your local, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But it didn't happen for me like that. And I felt that it's good that you and the other photographers also do that, who kind of, in a sense, take people under their wings because people don't have guidance. People don't know how to, yeah. you know, just to, like, I didn't know at all, you know, until I met uh, nursemaid Edmund now and, and, Sed- and Sedgehog and Sedge. Yeah. I didn't know how to... Who to approach, how to talk to, how do you get into these events, how do you, you know, market yourself, who is the right person to ask to get in. I didn't know any of that. And until That's I, hard. And, I, and when I met them, and then they started talking to me, and I started talking to them, and they gave me pointers, tips, advice, things like who to approach, you know, how, how to uh, market yourself, uh, and, and building a brand. Those things, I'm glad I met them, because if I did, I'd be still somewhat lost. Yeah. You know, and even till today, you know, whenever I have... Whenever, um, like I told J Max a while back, like I got approached by someone, I don't know how to handle this, and he literally just like told me like, "Hey, here, you know, here's here's what you should do, you know, things like that." And I felt that it's good that you, in turn, somebody who's hit several high points, is willing to also say, "I've had my era, but I also feel like there's an era for everyone. Let's let's all work together for it." I I feel like. I don't know if that's the right the right way to you know summarize what you're talking about. Um, it was definitely just it wasn't really me stepping aside and let others take over. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely still going to be leading the charge in some way. Mm-hmm. But I definitely wanted I wanted it to be a lot easier for people who saw my content who wanted to do that to be able to find a place to learn about how to do it because like there are no esports photography classes out there. Oh, no. There's none. There's a bunch yeah. of photography courses. Yeah. But there's a lot of aspects in esports that you need to learn. You need to learn certain games. You need to learn like why was this moment in league so so crucial, so yeah, pivotal, wh- so why did this guy pop off over killing this guy? I don't understand. Yeah. You know, I learned a lot of that just from experience with Call of Duty in Halo mm-hmm. where oh, I miss Halo. A, where a COD player <laughs> where a Call of Duty player got traded to another team and then he 1v3s his old team. Yeah. That's huge. That's massive. But mm. nobody knows that. Yeah. And it's like, it's, I'm not telling everybody you have to keep up with the game to understand. You just have to understand that if this is the game that you're interested in, you need to learn about it. And it's like, where do I go to learn about it? Well, you can go to the Discord or you can go onto Twitter. You can just follow your own community and, mm. and learn how to do that. But it's like, well, how do I shoot it? Like, how do, how do I do this? How do I do that? You know, what, what's my proper lighting? You know, how do I do it? You know, once I get to that moment in time, mm. how do I shoot it? It's like, come to me. Mm. Here's a Discord link. Here's Robert Paul. Here's Tish Photos. Here's myself, Hy- Hyrule Princess, you know, Tam Tam. You know, all these huge names in the photography, in the photography esports world that are all there. Mm. And they're all willing to learn. In fact... Robert Paul, who's like the biggest one of them all, is actually the most active one in the Discord. <laughs> That's like, amazing. Like he's constantly posting links to like stuff that you can buy. Yeah. He's just like, hey helping, guys, helping you get yeah, started. Yeah, helping he's helping. You. He's helping yeah. everybody learn. And he's just like, here are the shoes that I learned for running tournaments. Mm-hmm. Like whenever I go do tournaments, these are the shoes that I wear so my feet don't get too tired. Here's that's that's, that's the, really the, useful. I'm not gonna these, lie. Yeah. These are on sale for about 25 percent off over here at this website. Go. Yeah. And that's it. You know, 
here's a new camera that's coming out and everybody wants to know what's in the new camera so yeah. people on the discord will be talking about it for hours and i'm sitting there like dude this is this is amazing there's plenty of people who are just starting who get in there and they're just like wow i learned so much in like two weeks and i have in like three years of school yeah and i'm like well that, that's usually how the real world works you know yeah you, you get into the real world you know i i took a course in photography and i learned more in esports than i have at that course yeah because in that course i'm doing a lot of stuff that doesn't pertain to what i want to do mm -hmm. it's and better to it, it's get better out there to and just get out there and do it yeah but obviously you need some guidance so it's like here is a discord and here is me being able to help you so i think for ultimate there's definitely going to be not only a lot of new players but also a lot of new content creators that want to get out there who need to learn about what it is to get into it mm -hmm. you know how can i learn about the game like how can i learn how to shoot these kind of events because even for hyro soccer we had somebody who never who has never done it before yeah. he approaches me and he's like hey i asked i asked demi and i asked jmx you know who can i talk to about photography stuff and they sent and they sent them to me mm. and i i basically took them out and i just said i want you to aim at that guy there and wait mm -hmm. and he's like what do you mean i'm like good luck <laughs> I, I i i looked at his settings i turned it down a little bit and then i turned the brightness up and i just said okay put this on high speed aim at that guy right there and just wait you'll know it when you feel it the moment happens he that guy popped off mm -hmm. and he just went sap 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 and he showed me i'm just like there you go turn the brightness up on that turn the shadows down on that and you'll be good and he's like i would never would have thought of that yeah and i'm like there you go like that's that's that moment that i'm looking for only in photography terms and yeah. in, in discord terms and being able to just get out there and be able to help people you know i mm -hmm. i wanted to be able to do that since the beginning i didn't have the pool to be able to do it because my reputation wasn't there in a sense um i just that was something i always wanted to do that's something i always wanted to teach new people how to just get into it and just be just be relaxed and not feel intimidated yeah and i know? feel like that's what we'll see with ultimate is this content creation from a lot of people it's gonna be know? it's gonna be an explosion of content yeah it like, is like smash ultimate's gonna come out mm -hmm. if you go to your subscriptions on youtube if you go if you go to the subscriptions on youtube and you just hit refresh at mm -hmm. midnight oh it's gonna hence that li live stream of the live stream video it, it, yeah. it's gonna explode your twitches are gonna go off like everything's gonna be going off and there's gonna be a bunch of people who are mm. gonna be extra motivated to get out there and just contribute to their community because at first that's what i wanted to do yeah i wanted to go out there and show the world here are the tournaments because it all started with that google doc yeah the google doc came out and i'm just like how can i push this promotion further mm. how about i do video i don't have the upload speed for that how about i do photos instead Okay. And I did photos and that was to also promote the scene and to get it out there so that more people can get into it so that we can have more friends and be, be able to hang out with more people. Well, here we are at the end of it. <laughs> and I, at the end of, at the end of it, not at the end of it all, but I'd say at the end of an era. And I, and I feel like it's great to hear your story from your perspective, from your side, from your, from the era, from the beginning. Like people now know, you know, to find tournaments, dude, it was not the easiest thing in the world. It wasn't easy. Yeah, <laughs> and then now they know, man, the struggle was real. Now I just tell people, hey, man, you go on a little website called Smash.gg, <laughs> type of Smash tournament, and you'll find something. Yeah, you you'll definitely find something. And it was like we were in an era before Smash.gg. Oh yeah, we we existed before Smash.gg, so it's like, yeah, we're all, we're a bunch of curmudgeon old men <laughs> <laughs> no scared me off my lawn you're kids in your fortnite <laughs> why is she doing the floss <laughs> just some guy in the back of the nah it's it's been a wild ride yeah. from here i just want to promote like my i want to promote my passion i want to be able to promote that but also lead the charge for many of the new people behind me who yeah. got inspired by either my work or Roberts or Tish's or Tam Tam or whoever, you know, out there who just just wanted to just do that. You know, Sorry, I'm a little sick. That high. yeah, it's fine. It's just like I just want to promote it. You know, I yeah. just want to show it off more. It's like not even show off my content, but show off everyone else's content. So yeah, that's probably the new step in my era is. I've hit everything I wanted to hit. I want you to hit all of those spots, to hit all of those multiple websites, except for Yahoo, because Yahoo, 
<laughs> rip, um, uh, we all remember rip, that. Rip Yahoo, and it's like, I want you all to hit that spot multiple times. Over and over. I want them to be your go-to. Yeah. I want you to be their go-to, I mean. You know, like, I want your content to get out there because I believe in you. And it's that that's that's where I want to go. Well, that's the next era. What a humble man. What a <laughs> humble man indeed, Javi. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, man, Live no here from Hollywood Action Tuesdays. Also, we got the Spiff plug-in. Y'all oh, want your own Spiff shirt? Oh, these guys, dude. They, that's, man, that, that's a whole story. That's too. a whole. I'm, I hope to get them on the show soon. Very busy man. Very busy man. That's the, the but um, Javi, thank you so much. Where can people fall? Where can people find you? Um, they can find me at at Javi Levas. Mm -hmm. Um, on Twitter, um, Javi Um, it's also my website where my galleries are. If you guys mm -hmm. want to go visit that, um, there's also Javi Levas on Instagram, mm -hmm. and that's really about it. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna be visiting Instagram, please don't be expecting much. <laughs> Um, hey, it, good good thing for telling them though, because some people you know they expect the highest content and all that. It's hard to put out consistent content on there mm -hmm. because you have to get it from the camera over to the computer and then from the computer to your phone. Yeah, and I'm like, this is a pain. <laughs> Why can't I just upload from my desktop? <laughs> 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 Anyways, thank you so much for being on. Any final words? Keep it loose and keep it colorful. All right. Be relaxed and be creative. There it is, man. The man behind the lens, the story, the legend, to be continued in ultimate further on anyways this has been me vance live here from hollywood action tuesdays filming before hat before we run the stream thank you guys all so much for watching you guys can follow me on twitter at vance underscore exe until next time as javi said keep it colorful what else damn i totally forgot keep it loose and colorful keep it loose and colorful guys bye bye